Right, welcome back. Welcome back to the, uh, to the show here, Tips and Tricks on the EX3. Thanks for checking out that video. Something to think about when you're buying a camera. Buy a warranty, a couple extra years. Anyway, um, let's, let's get back to the issues at hand. We're talking about the EX3. We're talking about how to work with it. We've got a couple questions from our millions of internet viewers. And let's hear them, Tom. Uh, what's the difference in download speed between the Express card in the actual MacBook and just like a USB reader? All right, a great question. Sony, uh, let me repeat it. What's the difference between the speed in downloading from the USB reader and actually inserted in the laptop, if I understand you properly? So let's start out with the slowest connection. Slowest connection would be a USB camera, a USB cable from the camera to the laptop. All right? The transfer time there, three times real time. Meaning you shoot an hour, you transfer in 20 minutes. Unheard of speeds, all right? but it gets even faster. Let's say you put it in a USB reader. Okay, which is also connected USB, but for some reason is somewhat faster. It's not four times faster, but it's somewhat faster than three times faster than real time. Then you move into the absolute fastest transfer method, and that's when you have the S by S card inserted directly into the laptop. Again, it's still not reaching four times faster, but it is just slightly faster than your three times faster than real time. So basically, any method you choose is going to be blinding fast. If you like to count bits and bytes and seconds and frames, your fastest method is to get one of the old new Mac laptops. Uh, put your S by S card right in there. Unfortunately, the new new Mac laptops don't have these S by S slots. Why? I don't know. Some of the Sony Vios coming out do have them. Some of the other Dells and, and maybe Apple will put it back into the laptops for us. We don't know. But, um, a 17 inch new new Mac laptop definitely has S by S cards so you can get the fastest transfer out of them. Uh, S by S slots for your cards. Cool? Are we, we have other web questions? Uh, not at the moment. Not at the moment. Okay. Express All right. 34. Express 34. Thank you. So the, the actual name of the slot is an Express 34 slot. If you're a, if you're a camera guy, though, you can call it S by S. Uh, we've got a question in the back. Yeah. Is there a lot of Hello, everyone. Is there like like um, uh, like an adapter or something that replaces that that uh, that thing you know to use the the card that, that the laptops right. have? Right. So the question is, is there an adapter or something to replace the Express 34 slot? The answer, yes, there absolutely is. Um, I I have one. I don't have it out here to show you. But after the show, I'll show it to you. Internet people will uh, will will hold one up in the, uh, the flash card at the end of the. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's basically a, a, you remember when we used to use those three and a half inch floppy drives or the five and a quarter floppy drives? You might have one like connected to your computer with a multi-pin D sub K. It's just like that, but you know, the 21st century version. It's about this big. It's like seven ounces heavy. Uh, you slide your card into it. It connects to the computer with a USB cable and you're done. Oh, no, excuse me, you're not done. It does have a power adapter. You have to plug it into the wall outlet. But then you're done. Cool? It works the same way. Like it, is, it works the same way, right? I mean, it, it works exactly the same way. When you've got the express card reader connected USB to the computer and you have an express card inserted in it, you will have that untitled disk pop up on your desktop. And you can treat it just like a hard drive. <clears throat> yes, sir? With the USB adapter, the transfer rate's about six times. Directly into the Express 34 in the, in the laptop, it's over eight times. So um, suggestion from the crowd, when you're using the USB adapter, it's six times real time. When you've got the card inserted directly in the computer, it's eight times faster than real time. So you shoot uh, an hour, it takes about 12 minutes, 12 minutes to transfer. That's, that's unbelievable. You, I, I believe you, but that's an unbelievable statistic, man. You've, you've done it. You've tested it. Well, that's what the Sony side has. That's what the Sony site says. I believe Sony too. So that's, uh, that's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Question in the back. Pretty much all you need is the clip browser. You just connect the USB, open the clip browser, and just import all the files from the card. Uh, there, so you're bringing up two points. Um, number one, what do you need to import the card? And number two, the difference between the, the clip browser and the clip transfer. So Sony has two free pieces of software. The clip browser allows you to view your clips on any card or the copies of the clips that you made. Remember when you copied your BVAV folders? You can view them. You can set in points and out points. You can name them, add other, other metadata. But in the clip browser software, the best you can do is sort of go to file, convert, and make an MXF to import into Avid. Right? Um, you can see your, it's great for viewing your clips. But um, that's about as far as it'll take you. 
there's another program called XDCAM Transfer Software. Now what that is, is a Final Cut Pro plugin. So it sort of leverages all the power of Final Cut Pro and allows you to import media right directly into your bin. Two separate programs. The Clip Browser allows you to view and convert to MXF. The Clip Transfer allows you to ingest directly to Final Cut. Question in the middle. If you're using a PC, another uh, program you can use is called Sony Vegas Pro. And, um, they actually created a program that works natively with the S by X card, so you can just drag and drop right onto the timeline without having to use any third party plugin or anything like that. So, An excellent point. So Sony um, Vegas software edits natively. And you can download a demo f uh, at sonycreativesoftware.com. Sweet, sweet. All right, shameless plugs. Keep them coming. I like it. I like it. This is a good, good format for that. Question in the back. Yeah, one thing you guys ought to consider is that when you're using the XD Cam transfer and the clip browser, that's fine for adjusting your clips, but copying it over like he showed you, remember once you record that, once you transfer it over and you go and format your card, it's not like the old days where you would have a tape backup. So there's two steps. There's the XD Cam transfer and then doing what he did, because if something happens, your computer crashes, your drive crashes, you want to have that footage somewhere else. So it's really a two-step process. It's the the import, which we haven't covered yet, but that copying it, you want to make sure you copy it because you want it on there for backup. All right. Great point, Verge. <laughs> yeah, so you, if you, what are you going to do? How are you going to archive your stuff? You don't want it to just disappear. Definitely make a copy of your BPAV folder. Maybe you even want to print to DVDs or XDCAM discs. There's a, that PDWU1 reader that allows you to sort of back up your stuff. Um, one person said something interesting to me. They like to only shoot on 8 gig S by S cards because 8 gigs is about the same size as a double density DVD. So you copy the BPAV folder to your hard drive. You've got about 8 gigs. Then you burn that information to a dual density DVD and voila, you've got something you can actually hand off to somebody. Right? Pretty cool. Pretty cool. We, we have a few of them. All right, a few questions from our millions of billions of internet viewers. Okay, are you getting a 422 with the card reader? An excellent question. Are you getting 422 with the card reader? I have to apologize to everyone in line behind this person because it, it really opens up uh, uh, some important questions. The XDCAM EX codec, what you record to on the cards, 35 megabits per second, 420 color space. Okay, so once you've captured to the card, that's it. You don't get those two back. It's 420. All right. However, the HDSDI output of the XDCAM cameras, 3 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz per second uncompressed high definition. So if you can somehow harness that on a codec that does record 422, then yes, you will get 422. Now, let me just mention a couple of those. Maybe you've got an HDCAM deck. Maybe you've got a DVC Pro HD deck. HDSDI input, you can record the tape. That's one nice method. Maybe you've got a Final Cut Pro system with a black magic card. HDSDI input, you can record live to your hard drive. That's another method of recording 422 color space. And now, hold on to your butts because this is a big one. This is the Aja Key Pro. Look at this. That is awesome. Why is it awesome? You can take the HDSDI output of the camera, HDSDI input into the Key Pro. This is a removable 250 gig hard drive. You can replace it with a 500 gig hard drive. You can stick S by S cards right in the slots here and record an Apple's ProRes 422 HQ codec. All right, that's a 422 color space. Um, Ricardo mentioned this a little bit earlier and now I'm really gonna harp on it. You record to the cards, 35 megabits per second, 420. You take that HDSDI output into something like this, okay? You don't have to digitize. This hard drive will record your live image, 422, Apple ProRes. I, I'm just, I'm, uh, the words escape me how exciting this is. This is the first one, um, you know what? This is the first one in the country. This is the first one in the universe. Midtown Video has received it here. If you're watching this clip on the internet, say, two months from now, maybe it's not the first one anymore, but you saw it here live. First one in the universe. Aja Key Pro. Look uh, for our website. You know, we like to make videos about stuff. We're going to make a video about this pretty soon.